This story is about a teenager named Sam Talon. In class, he was the smartest, always receiving awards. He lived with his mother in a very poor neighborhood. His father was absent, an ordinary genius with a troubled past. Suddenly, in one moment, Sam wakes up at school, with a classmate lying on him and a terrible smell of decay in the air. Sam understood nothing and remembered nothing. His head was simply throbbing with pain, and his brain activity was somewhat sluggish. Only now did he notice the blood on his body, and then he saw someone's leg lying next to him. He had to cover his mouth with his hand to keep from throwing up. Surprisingly, Sam remained quite calm, not even screaming. He was just looking for someone named Ray, although it wouldn't be bad to find at least someone alive. When Sam stepped out of the classroom into the hallway, he spotted a classmate. He was very glad to see someone alive and suggested calling an ambulance. But, as luck would have it, there was no signal at all. Suddenly, this classmate flipped Sam the bird, saying it was all his fault. Those were his last words, for shortly after, the boy suddenly died. For some reason, this did not surprise Sam. It seemed he still hadn't accepted this new reality. The strangest thing was that Sam couldn't remember anything at all. Why was everyone dead? Why had he survived? Just then, he heard a growl. In school? When Sam peeked out, he saw a dog that had probably come for the scent of blood. Sam thought it was a cute, friendly puppy. But when he looked closer, he saw some kind of monster devouring a student. Sam froze in fear, his heart suddenly racing. It seemed to be just a vicious dog of an unknown breed. Suddenly, the monster sprouted sharp claws all over its face and extended a long tongue. Sam stood in a stupor when someone shouted at him to run. Meanwhile, the events shifted back 35 days before the apocalypse. Sam was feeling down when the teacher came in with the results of the last test. The results were posted on the board, and students rushed to check who had scored the highest. But everyone already understood it was Sam. Again, it was him. That jerk didn't even get up to check the results, which irritated his classmates. Sam was always handed awards for non-academic achievements, and in truth, this annoyed his classmates. It annoyed them so much that they came up with a plan to put the braggart in his place. One day, Sam noticed that his locker had been broken into. His things were stolen, and they left a note with a message to meet after school on the roof. Sam understood this wouldn't be a pleasant conversation, but he decided to ignore all the crap his classmates would say to avoid upsetting his mom. On the roof, as in a typical teenage story, a fight broke out. A classmate punched Sam for being a genius. Sam didn't understand what he had done wrong, why people were like this, but unfortunately, that was the reality. Meanwhile, evening fell. A teacher approached Sam. He wanted to find out where the student had gotten the bruise, but there was a more important matter. The teacher delivered the sad news that Sam's mother was in the hospital. Meanwhile, the events returned to the reality where Sam now had to fend off a monster. The teenager began to run, just as he had been advised. He dashed into the first room he saw and shut the door behind him. Sam, in shock, searched for something to defend himself with. He had never felt such adrenaline before, as his life had been quite mundane and peaceful. There was a pencil on the floor, not much. At that moment, the monster burst in. Sam seized the moment and stabbed the monster with the pencil. Like a true genius, the teenager aimed for the eye, which gave him a slight advantage. But it wouldn't be fair to say Sam wasn't scared. He ran quickly and didn't even look back. Suddenly, around the corner, the monster caught up with him. Sam regretted turning around but ran further up. He reached the roof and locked the door behind him. Sam thought he had finally escaped and was safe. But at that moment, out of nowhere, the monster lunged at the teenager. Meanwhile, the events shifted back to the past when Sam rushed to the hospital. He quickly entered the room and was met with a horrifying sight. That was when the teenager's life changed, and it was no longer carefree. He had worked hard for them and believed his mother should have lived. But unfortunately, reality was much harsher. The doctor said that his mother had overworked herself and had been poorly nourished. Her body simply gave out. It felt as if a piece of Sam's body had been ripped away. How had he not noticed anything? They lived very poorly, practically in poverty. Sam realized that when they sat down to eat, his mother always didn't eat with him. Because she said she had eaten before he returned home, Sam understood that she had been lying to him. Even though he was a genius, he couldn't help his own mother. What was he supposed to do now? He had no one at all. When Sam said goodbye to his mother, someone approached them. Two men from social services came to inform Sam about his future. He thought he had become an orphan and would probably be taken to an orphanage. But it turned out that Sam had an uncle who agreed to take care of the boy. He was Sam's mother's brother, but the teenager knew nothing about this uncle. 
and that relative lived far away on the island of Vinerick. Meanwhile, the events returned to the reality where Sam was still fighting monsters. The teenager took off his jacket and prepared to face the monster. He had only one chance at this. The monster seemed to sense Sam's readiness and lunged first. Sam's heart raced wildly. He was very afraid of not making it in time. But gathering his strength, he threw his jacket at the monster. Sam threw with all his might, causing the monster dog to stumble and crash into the rooftop railing. It fell down, crashing onto the asphalt. Meanwhile, Sam descended to the restroom where he decided to wash the blood off. He knew something was wrong on this island. Suddenly, Sam heard someone crying. It sounded human. The sounds were coming from the stalls in the restroom. Sam decided to open a stall and ask if the crying person was okay. Inside, he found a boy who was trembling so much that he might have wet his pants from fear. He grabbed Sam's shirt, screaming with joy, thinking he was the only one who survived at school. Sam didn't like this behavior. He ordered the boy to calm down. The teenager suddenly froze and asked if Sam was okay. But Sam interrupted his words, asking why everyone was reacting this way. The boy said he wasn't worried about what had happened. He just asked to be taken with him. Sam said he didn't think he could help him, as he couldn't even help himself. But the boy stood his ground. He saw safety and protection in Sam. Sam ignored the boy's words and asked where the science class was. They set off in that direction. Sam opened the bag and the boy wanted to offer his help. He said too much had happened here, and it would take much more than one dog to cause all this. The boy still didn't understand why Sam was stealing from the science class. But the teenager wasn't stealing, he was making weapons. Sam also found a broom, the stick could come in handy. After that, he poured some substance on it, and everything began to bubble. And then Sam had a decent weapon, definitely better than a pencil. But as the teenager was about to leave, he was stopped by the clingy boy who begged to take him along. Sam replied that he couldn't trust everyone, because trusting someone would sooner or later get him a knife in the back. The boys reached the door with windows. They peeked inside and saw the monster dog. It was wandering around as if it were just a park. The boys crouched down. Sam asked if the boy knew how bad things had been at school. But his partner had locked himself in the restroom when it all started. Sam held his head. It still hurt terribly, but he was more worried about why he remembered nothing. The boy asked why they couldn't wait inside until help arrived. Sam replied that everyone on the island could have been dead long ago. He added that the school was strange, as it had no emergency exit, and the windows were made of bulletproof glass. Suddenly, the partner grabbed Sam's shirt again and shouted that they were all in this mess because of Sam's foolishness. The teenager was shocked. He told him to stop blaming him for their problems and reminded him that he hadn't asked him to follow him. After that, Sam stood up and told the jerk to stay alone. The partner thought they really shouldn't blame Sam as none of them could have stopped this. Sam decided to take action, encouraging himself that this was just another dog. After all, he had dealt with one already so he could handle another. But a surprise awaited Sam in the form of a monster with tentacles, each tipped with claws. The teenager hadn't expected this dog to be different. The monster didn't wait a second and immediately launched its tentacles at Sam. But the teenager managed to dodge, although the fact that the monster broke through the wall made him even more frightened. After that, the monster wrapped its limbs around Sam's weapon, and it simply broke under such pressure. Sam realized he had to come up with some sort of plan immediately. He stood in a stupor for a few seconds, after which he threw off his bag and got ready to face the monster. The dog immediately aimed its tentacles at Sam, but the teenager managed to dodge all of them. After that, he realized this was his chance when all the monster's daggers were stuck in the walls. Sam quickly thrust his weapon straight into the monster's throat. The dog collapsed, unconscious. Sam understood that things were much worse, as it seemed these monsters had mutated. Meanwhile, Sam's partner appeared, praising him for managing to do it. Suddenly, the expression on the teenager's face changed sharply, as if he had seen something terrible. It was true, as behind the boy, a monster suddenly appeared, ready to simply devour him. The boy screamed that he didn't want to die, but that didn't help him, and the monster simply lunged at the poor kid. Sam felt a chill run through him. His legs went numb and his body wouldn't obey. He hadn't expected the monster to jump out like that, but why hadn't the partner been more careful? Sam understood he had to do something, and very quickly. Suddenly, he remembered that there were chemicals in his bag. Sam anticipated that they could come in handy. First, he had to attract the dog's attention, so he threw the chemicals at its face. Now Sam had to act quickly himself so he wouldn't end up in his partner's place. 
The monster stared at its attacker for a few seconds as if gathering rage, after which it lunged at Sam. The teenager was ready. He had a plan, and he threw the remnants of the chemicals at the monster. This yielded better results. The creature's face began to dissolve. For an even better result, Sam also stabbed the monster with the stick, just to be safe. Sam looked at his partner and thought it was his mistake. After all, if he had made a weapon for that guy, he could have defended himself. Sam didn't even know his name. Suddenly, he felt very ill. The sharp pain returned, and there were gaps in his memory. He decided that he should first find out what was happening here, and Ray should know if he was still alive. The tentacles of this creature easily sliced through the wall. Therefore, an idea came to Sam to make weapons out of them. He poured chemicals onto the dog's body to separate the sharp part. Meanwhile, events shifted to the past. When Sam was traveling to his uncle's island, he had his expectations for this meeting. But it was strange that his mother had never mentioned him. Still, Sam hoped this would be his new home. He desperately needed a home. When the teenager stepped off the ship, he was greeted at the entrance by a man with a sign that read, Sam Talon. Sam approached and stated his name. The uncle seemed surprisingly shocked. After which, he embraced him tightly, as if they were close, and expressed sympathy for the loss of his mother. The uncle said he hadn't seen his nephew in a long time. Sam was surprised they had ever met at all. Then, with a smile, the uncle said that Sam would like it here. The teenager suddenly felt hope, a warm feeling blossoming in his chest. He liked his uncle. Meanwhile, the boys arrived at Sam's new home. It was a simple but seemingly cozy little house. Sam paused at the entrance for some reason, as if he still didn't feel at home and was waiting for an invitation. While the boys were unpacking, Sam admitted that it felt strange to call the man uncle. The uncle understood everything, so he suggested Sam call him Charles. Sam confessed that his mother had never said she had a brother, so the teenager asked what had happened between them. Charles promised to answer all the teenager's questions, but first he needed to sleep since school started early. Sam agreed and found himself in his room, which looked quite empty. He lay down and thought about how he would go to the new school. Meanwhile, morning arrived. The uncle woke Sam because he had almost overslept school. Sam hurriedly got ready. Evidently, he was really tired after the journey. The teenager ran very quickly, fearing he would be late for his first day of school. He wasn't looking where he was going at all. A samurai has no goal, only a path. And so, Sam didn't notice the blonde boy in front of him. He simply knocked the poor kid off his feet. Sam apologized, but the blonde boy also apologized, which surprised Sam. The boy smiled and introduced himself. It was Ray. Events shifted to a more recent past when Ray had not yet been bitten by the monster. The teenagers were trapped. Their weapons were useless against the bodies of these monsters. They were not just dogs, but true monsters, human-sized. One of the monsters unleashed its tentacles at Ray, but the teenager managed to fend them off with a stick. Ray shouted that they had to survive, and that when the opportunity arose, they should run. He pleaded for someone to save them. It was too much for an ordinary teenager. The teenagers walked together, each holding some stick as a weapon. They felt as if someone was watching them, and they kept hearing noises. Suddenly, a wounded bird appeared, frightening the teenagers greatly. One of them said they shouldn't worry too much because the army had likely taken care of all the creatures. They believed that at any moment, someone could come to rescue them. Their leader skeptically asked if she really believed that. The girl stood her ground, arguing that there were thousands of people on the island, so the army had to come. The leader said that the boy they had all left to die in their class had spoken the truth, but everyone had been too scared to realize it. Suddenly, the rest pondered these words. It seemed to be a painful truth that was hard to accept. The leader added that they would all die sooner or later if what that boy said was true. Just then, a large, long tentacle shot toward the leader, but the boy dodged it with just a single fist. Suddenly, another tentacle appeared near Jerry and it quickly wrapped around his body like a snake. Jerry screamed for help. The monster fully emerged, and it had many more tentacles. Two classmates began to help with their sticks, but nothing worked because the body was like stone. Jerry panicked so much that he yelled at his classmates, but he just wanted to live. Then the leader took a stick, and he quickly lunged at the monster. He moved so organically, as if he were practicing martial arts, after which the leader killed the monster by stabbing it in the mouth but Jerry was also hurt. The rest of the teenagers were shocked and couldn't believe he had actually done it. The monster fell to the ground with Jerry. The leader was attacked with cries that he was a murderer and had killed their classmate. 
The teenager turned and said they all had to understand that he only cared about himself. He added that they could follow him, could lick his boots, but he didn't care. And if there was any chance, he would do everything to survive. After that, he simply walked away as if nothing had happened. Surprisingly, the rest followed him. But that boy still couldn't calm down that classmates had truly accepted such open disrespect. Then a classmate defended Mike, saying they were all alive thanks to him. The boy stood his ground, saying they could follow Mike. But they had to know that this scoundrel had killed a person and didn't even doubt that one of them would be next. But the teenagers were not concerned. They simply walked away. Meanwhile, Sam had already left school. Suddenly, he heard a scream and decided he better check what was going on. The screams were coming from the forest. Sam decided it was worth hurrying, and it seemed he saw someone. It was Ray, but nearby were those creatures. Sam had never seen anything like them, but the monsters resembled the dogs he had fought. The teenager decided to act quickly and do something. Otherwise, Ray would end up like that boy at school. Sam could no longer allow something like that to happen. He opened his supply bag. It should be enough. Ray told his classmates that if they stayed in formation, they could block the monster's attacks. But for how long? To confirm these words, a monster unleashed one of its tentacles, but the boy dodged it with a trash can lid. Suddenly, the poor kid began to shake violently from fear. He knew he would definitely die if he stayed there. So he apologized and quickly began to run away. But this only provoked the monster. It grabbed the boy with its tentacles. The monster pulled him toward itself. The classmates who were watching stood in shock. Their bodies wouldn't obey. They had already resigned themselves to the fact that they would all die because they had seen the monster devour their classmate right before their eyes. But they had a chance for salvation as Sam came to help. With a single swift blow, he severed the monster's head. Ray was incredibly happy that his friend was alive. But Sam had other problems, as there was not just one monster there. Immediately, two scoundrels lunged at the teenager with their tentacles. But for Sam, this was no obstacle. He easily fended off their attack. The classmates were shocked, as their weapons couldn't even scratch the monsters, while Sam was doing it effortlessly. After which, the teenager immediately threw a sharp stick at another monster, severing one of its tentacles. Then he jumped and pressed down on the stick, piercing the head of that scoundrel. The other monster met the same fate. Sam defeated all the creatures. He coughed and came to his senses as one wrong move could have meant his death long ago. Suddenly, Ray shouted to his friend to be careful, as there was another one behind him. The monster appeared like a rat, right behind Sam. Just then, something whistled loudly, after which, an arrow pierced the monster's head and went straight through. And the creature simply fell before Sam, who stood in shock, not understanding what was happening. Behind the monster, he saw a girl with pink hair and a nice figure. She told Sam that this was already the second time that day she had saved his ass. The teenager was surprised about what other incident she was talking about. He asked if she was the one who told him to run at school when that dog attacked Sam, and it turned out to be her. She turned and said that now the teenager was her debtor. Sam didn't argue. He even liked that. Then Ray approached and said how glad he was to see his friend, as he didn't believe he was still alive. The boys behind discussed that Sam was actually a traitor. And then one of them told Ray that he had never shared with them that he was friends with a traitor. Sam became very angry at these words and asked him to repeat what he had said. The teenagers told Ray that they didn't trust the traitor and wouldn't be around him. Then she intervened, saying that if it weren't for Sam, they would have all been eaten by monsters long ago. The boy replied that even if it weren't for Sam, she would have saved them then. These words deeply affected the girl. She asked why this scoundrel thought she would go with them and save them. Moreover, the girl admitted that she would never have killed four monsters herself. And the only reason she helped them all was Sam. He had killed three monsters himself, so it would be useful to keep him alive. The boy shouted that Sam was the cause of this chaos and apocalypse. Then Sam finally intervened, saying that it couldn't possibly be his fault at all. How was that possible? The classmate replied that it was because of Sam that the island was locked down. But the teenager couldn't remember anything. She said that Sam couldn't remember anything. Then he asked his friend Ray. He would surely tell the truth. But Ray didn't believe that Sam remembered nothing. The friend replied that all he remembered was the siren. And when he returned to class, everyone was already dead. Suddenly, that crazy classmate lunged at Sam, saying it was all nonsense, as he even knew how to fight these creatures, so he was definitely a traitor. The boy was about to pounce, but suddenly, an arrow appeared before his face. It threatened the scoundrel. 
Then Ray intervened, ordering to stop all this mess. He admitted that he could explain everything to them if Sam remembered nothing. Ray first wanted to know why Sam had come to Winverk Island. Suddenly, Sam remembered that he had found a dead body and a diary in the cave. Ray asked if the friend remembered his uncle. Sam replied that the adults had lied to them all. Sam said he needed proof, as no one believed him, which is why he went into the Forbidden Zone. Now, everyone remembered everything. Meanwhile, events shifted to the past, where Ray and Sam had just met. Ray asked why Sam had decided to come to Winverk, but Sam remained silent, giving the impression of a quiet guy. Ray decided not to give up and began to talk about the advantages of their island, adding that there were many like Sam here. Sam was touched by these words and asked him to explain what he meant. The teenager felt embarrassed. He apologized, explaining that they had many people who didn't want to share their past. Sam said briefly and unemotionally that changes can sometimes be pleasant. Ray praised the mood of his new friend. Meanwhile, they had already reached the school. The teacher introduced the new student to the class. The students did not show any particular reaction. Ray called Sam to sit next to him. He said the newcomer was lucky to meet Ray, to which Sam responded sarcastically. And Ray replied that he could do without that. This made the newcomer smile and Ray was shocked that Sam was not a robot. Thus, this friendship was born. Sam decided that Ray wasn't so bad. He was a bit annoying with his chatter, but still chose to befriend him. Ray mentioned that most people went to the beach after school, as well as to a few bars, but they weren't allowed in due to their age. Sam was outraged that there was so little to do and said he could explore the island. Ray said he could go along to show the best spots on the island, but he had football practice. But he warned Sam to stay away from the forbidden zones. Finally, something interesting for the newcomer. Ray said there were signs indicating high radiation levels due to past testing. Then he suggested Sam join him at the football club. The newcomer said he played well but didn't really want to join any clubs. Ray decided to spark his interest by saying that Sam's backside wouldn't burn too much the first time. The newcomer didn't take the bait, promising to check out Ray's skills next time. Meanwhile, the entire school day had passed. Sam was walking home, thinking about where to go. He decided to head to the beach, as he thought his mom would really like that place. Next to the beach was a cliff, and a brilliant idea struck Sam. The beach would look better from the top. He decided to climb the cliff by himself, just in his swimsuit. When he reached the top, something immediately caught his attention. There was a mysterious cave up there. Sam did not expect to find something like this. The teenager decided to go inside, but it was too dark. So he decided to use his phone. The phone didn't provide enough light to illuminate the entire cave. But a sharp stench was immediately noticeable. Sam tried to peer into the darkness to understand what it was, and it seemed he finally saw something. On the ground lay a book and a lot of scattered paper. It resembled some kind of diary. Someone had written it out of boredom. Sam noticed that several pages from the diary were torn out. Another page lay nearby. Day 28. People could not understand where the attack had started and trusted no one. The diary's author had lost everyone but found the cave to hide in. They wouldn't be able to reach him here. Suddenly, Sam found something else. Some white stones. But when he got closer, shock twisted his body. There were many bones on the ground, and they were human. An entire skeleton. Sam immediately decided he had to get out of this madness. And then he found another exit. The teenager made his way outside and ran quickly. He decided it was worth contacting the police and showing them the diary and those bones. Sam ran so fast that he didn't notice he was being watched. And the one who was watching realized that the teenager had found the diary. Because he was new to the island, Sam got a bit lost. He thought he would exit through the beach, but he found himself in the middle of a field but it seemed the teenager had found some kind of path. Following it led him to a fence. It seemed to be one of those forbidden zones Ray had told him about. Sam decided he would be in trouble. But despite that, he still felt it was his duty to tell the police everything. He headed there. The police were immediately skeptical of the boy, as they had never seen him on the island before. Sam reported a crime. He made a loud statement that he had found a corpse. This startled the police quite a bit. They immediately headed to the cave but there were no more bones there. The officer said he saw nothing, his voice laced with mockery and disbelief. Sam swore there had been an entire skeleton. The officer replied that the teenager was lucky he wasn't arrested for being in a forbidden zone at all. The female officer was a bit kinder, so she told Sam that the human mind loves to deceive in the dark. But the teenager stood his ground, so she handed him her card and told him to call her if he saw anything else. The police left, and the man told his partner to stop being so nice to that damned kid. Sam heard all of this, 
He returned to his new home, and he couldn't shake the situation from his mind. Could it all have just been in his head? But no, if all of this were untrue, he wouldn't have the diary. Meanwhile, the next day arrived. Classes were over. Sam told Ray he wanted to talk to him about something. Ray joked that he had to go buy a lottery ticket since Sam wanted to talk to him. Sam did not appreciate such humor. Meanwhile, a few minutes passed. Sam told his friend everything about the previous day. He wanted to ask Ray about something else, something more personal. Sam wanted to know how his friend ended up on the island. Ray didn't really like to share, but seeing Sam's excitement, he shared that he was an orphan. Sam was surprised it couldn't be true. After all, he had asked another classmate and he also moved and lived with his cousin. Sam decided it was just a coincidence. Ray said his friend was starting to scare him, but Sam just turned and ran off, saying he had something to check at home. He stood in front of the door, preparing to do it. But Charles decided to take matters into his own hands and opened the door first. Sam said he had a school project he needed to work on. He gathered his courage and asked why Charles decided to live on the island. The uncle replied that he just wanted to live a quiet life, and the island was the perfect place for that. Sam said it really was a nice place, as he and his mom were from the countryside. Charles smiled, saying he had never thought of it that way. Sam returned to his room. His uncle was lying. His mom had said she grew up in the city. Everyone he asked was on the island, not with their real parents, but with foster relatives. But why then did the uncle lie to him about this? To be honest, Sam wouldn't have worried too much about it. But what he saw in the diary in that cave. The teenager kept recalling their words, trust no one. And it really began to trouble him. If he told someone about it, everyone would think he was a crazy conspiracy theorist. But even if that were the case, if Sam wanted to uncover the secret of this island, he had to venture into the forbidden zone. Night fell. Sam dressed in black so he wouldn't be noticed. Ray told his friend to head to the forbidden zone in the south because there were fewer guards there. Earlier that day, Sam had spoken to Ray on the phone, and his friend was very upset, saying Sam was just crazy, but he didn't want to listen to Ray. He just shared in case there were no updates from him in the morning. Ray said he couldn't stop his friend and was afraid to go along, but he could give advice on where to go. Meanwhile, Sam reached the forbidden zone, and there really was only one guard. He decided to wait for the right moment, but he was making too much noise. The guard nearly caught him. Sam was a step away from the guard. He was about to be caught. The teenager had to think quickly about what to do, fight or flee. Suddenly, a crow flew out from behind the bushes, startling the guard. And Sam took advantage of that moment. He reached some building. It was obvious something was hidden here. But first, Sam had to check if there was another guard around. In reality, someone was watching the teenager. This person was monitoring the cameras and said they knew Sam would want to learn more to discover the truth. Entering through the main entrance is always a bad idea. Sam found it strange that there was no one inside. Perhaps the guards were really just there to keep people out of the radiation. So the teenager decided not to linger and to look for another entrance. He found an entrance that was not locked, so he assumed it was abandoned. He began walking through the corridors. The walls were all scratched, as if claw marks. A thought crossed Sam's mind that they might have been breeding werewolves here. But he told himself to stop being an idiot and to keep going. The next door turned out to be locked, but there was another one ahead. And it finally turned out to be open. The room was eerie, containing only cameras that were positioned all over the island, including in schools and houses. Sam noticed something lying on the table as well. There was a book, and the teenager immediately had flashbacks from the cave. Inside was just a list of names. Suddenly, Sam recognized someone, that boy. He definitely went to school with him. The camera showed they were in the northern zone. But what were these people doing with the teenager and why were there two of them? Was this boy dangerous? Suddenly, at that moment, the lights went out. A guard rushed into the room, as it seemed someone had activated the alarm in the security room. When he pulled to open the door, the lights abruptly went out. It seemed they had reached the room with the switches. The guard quickly ran to turn the electricity back on. Sam decided this was a signal for him to get out of there quickly. So he did just that. Meanwhile, a new day arrived. Sam was at school. Ray came to him, saying he was glad he didn't have to go to the police for a search. But Sam was as serious as ever, so Ray asked why they were meeting on the roof instead of in class. Sam said it was dangerous, and he showed the notebook he had brought with him. Ray initially thought it was a school journal, as it even had the name of their school on it. Then, Ray noticed the names of former students. The teenager explained to Sam that the crossed-out names were of people who no longer lived on the island. 
Sam asked what the last name crossed out was. That was Kyle Watson. Sam asked Ray if he remembered what the man looked like. Ray clearly recalled the light hair, the center part, the thick nose. It turned out that the friend had been following blondes and trying to look better than them. Sam decided that this was the same guy from the security room. He was sure of it. He told Ray that the friend needed to hear everything he was about to say. After the story, Ray asked if that book was a death note and if everyone recorded in it had disappeared. Sam said he had seen Kyle on the cameras. They had to stop what was happening here. Ray suggested going to the police again. Sam replied that they hadn't believed him last time and wouldn't believe him this time without proof. Ray said that next on the list was Ashley Green and suggested they follow her. Sam liked this idea. Ray said he hoped Sam was wrong about that person. Sam also wanted to be wrong. Meanwhile, the teenager had returned home. But when he walked inside, he was somewhat surprised. There were many boxes lying on the floor. Were they moving? But Charles made that expression again and explained that he was just cleaning up, getting rid of the old. Sam asked him not to throw everything away as it looked like Charles was just emptying the house. But Charles got a call and asked Sam to go to his room to rest. Sam did so but overheard that Charles would be ready to leave by the weekend. Ready for what? The scene shifted to the teacher's lounge. Sam was talking to a teacher. She said she didn't think Sam and Kyle were such good friends. But Sam pretended to be clueless and asked what had happened to his friend, as he hadn't seen him for a few days. The woman said that Kyle had just decided to leave the island a few days ago, after which Sam went out to Ray and told him everything he had learned, which was practically nothing. Meanwhile, Ray found out that Ashley Green was at the archery club, and the guys decided to head down there. She was not alone there, but none of the guys understood what Ashley looked like, so they decided to just approach someone and ask. But the first girl said she hadn't seen Ashley Green since the day before. Sam said maybe they were late and she had left. Then Jade approached to ask what the couple wanted. They told her about Ashley Green and the phrase that they might be late. Then Jade decided she definitely needed to check on her friend at home. Meanwhile, the guys headed to seek help, as it could get very late. Sam was going to go to the police, and Ray was to go with him so he wouldn't be laughed at this time. That cop was yelling at the teenagers that they were just bothering them and wasting their time. The guys tried to prove that it was all true and something strange was happening on the island. They just asked to find Ashley and check her house or inspect the buildings in the restricted area. But the cop just insulted the kids and ordered them all to leave before they got arrested. Sam kept calm and finally said that they had a chance to save Ashley. He had given them all the information. The partner said that maybe they really should check her house. The man was strongly against it and was outraged that she was going there too. But then he eventually agreed. The police arrived at the house and knocked, but the door was not locked. This was strange. The police went inside. The partner said that something felt strange inside. He suggested they look around to possibly find something. But after long searches by both officers, they found nothing. It seemed that no one had lived in the house, and the officer began to believe Sam. Then Jade came to them. She said she had come to visit her friend. The officer lied that Ashley needed help moving. Jade was surprised as her friend hadn't told her about moving. The officer lied again, giving a new address for Ashley. Jade left. The partner asked why he lied, to which he replied that if Sam was telling the truth, they couldn't count on the kid's help. She said he was really soft no matter how hard he tried to hide it. Meanwhile, night fell and the police decided to head to the site. They asked the guard for permission to talk to Mr. White, but entry was forbidden without a record. Good thing police credentials always came in handy. The officer ordered the guard to pass on that they had questions regarding a missing child. While the guard was talking, the police discussed Mr. White. He was an authoritative figure, owning most of the land on the island and the nuclear power plant. Twenty years ago, an accident had occurred, so now his people made sure no one entered the territory. Meanwhile, the police were already let inside. They were surprised at what kind of security was needed for a nuclear facility. The police were told to enter a room. There they were met by a man with a scar on his face. He looked quite eerie. Mr. White inquired why the police had come to visit him. The man spoke very politely, but with a note of authority. The officer explained that they had been approached about the disappearance of student Kyle Watson, and the last time he was seen was in this building. Mr. White grinned, saying he was sure no one could take a step into this facility without his permission. The officer requested to check the recordings. Mr. White politely agreed and ordered them to follow him. He led the officers to the room where Sam was. The partner said she hadn't found any recordings with students. Mr. White repeated that he had already mentioned this. 
But then he added that they definitely had recordings that would help the police and asked to show the recording from room 24. It featured the same student, Kyle Watson. Something very strange was happening to the teenager. The sight left the officers speechless. They couldn't believe their eyes. The teenager's clothes had ripped apart. His hands had grown claws and his tongue had become as long as a reptile's. The officer called Mr. White a scoundrel and a villain. Then soldiers entered. They grabbed the officers. This was definitely not a good sign. But one of them wasn't going to give up easily. He seized an automatic weapon and aimed it at Mr. White. The boss suggested they all calm down now. The man ordered to release her or he would pull the trigger. Mr. White noted that each of them had a hostage. The officer threatened not to release the weapon until they left the building. They were indeed led outside. The officer ordered to release her. Mr. White winked at his soldiers, and they let the partner go, but she said she wouldn't leave him alone there. But the officer ordered her to go, promising that he would be fine. Her eyes widened in shock. She realized her partner had been lying to her. But she decided to run anyway because she felt the officer was serious. Then Mr. White turned and asked the officer why he was lying to such a lovely girl after which the officer fell to the ground, a dart sticking out of his neck. Mr. White said they should start the operation as soon as possible now. Meanwhile, the partner was running quickly, just as the officer had told her. She saw two soldiers. How could they have gotten there so fast? She peeked out and looked for a way to slip by quietly, but there was only one possible option. Meanwhile, the scene shifted to Sam's house. It was night, so the teenager was peacefully sleeping in his room. Suddenly, there was a knock at his window. Sam woke up immediately. He had a very sensitive sleep. When he opened the curtains, he couldn't believe his eyes. A police officer right outside his window in the middle of the night? He went out to talk to her. She immediately pounced on Sam, saying he was right and something strange was happening on the island. They needed help. The teenager grabbed her as the officer was too scared and ordered her to calm down. Then he asked her to tell him what had happened. Sam said after the story that he couldn't believe they had done all this right under their noses. He suggested contacting someone outside the island. But mobile service only worked on the island, and the only radio transmitter was in the police station. Sam said he would have suggested she stay with him, but he thought his so-called uncle was working for those people. Then the teenager said there was only one place that was safe. He told her to go to the cave and promised he would come later with food and water. She agreed, but said they had to warn everyone, after which she quickly ran away. Meanwhile, a notification came to Sam's phone. The number was hidden. The message said there was no time left, and they would start the next day, after which they sent a photo of the monster. It was Kyle Watson, torn clothes, the only thing left of the boy. The sight made Sam's heart race quickly. He just froze in place and couldn't figure out what to do. Meanwhile, a new day dawned and Sam was getting ready for school. Suddenly, a notification came to his phone. An emergency alert asked everyone to come to school as quickly as possible. Everyone, even guardians. Sam entered his uncle's room, but he was gone. Only a note remained saying Charles had already gone to school. Suddenly, the teenager received another notification. An anonymous person wrote to him, telling Sam not to go to school if he wanted to stay alive. Meanwhile, at school, everyone was discussing the news. Sam quickly ran into class and immediately ordered everyone to listen to him. He explained that the island was being used for experiments and they would all be turned into monsters. But of course, his classmates just laughed and didn't take his words seriously. Sam stood his ground, ordering everyone to leave immediately. Then he looked around and for some reason didn't see Ray anywhere. Sam continued trying to prove his point and asked if it wasn't strange that no one on the island lived with their real parents. He posed another question, asking if they all knew the person they lived with before coming to the island. The final question was whether it wasn't odd that everyone who left the island did so suddenly. A classmate said she noticed a few oddities, but that didn't mean they would be turned into monsters. Then, Sam pulled out his phone and showed his classmates the photo, saying this was what they were doing in the restricted area. Now the classmates were in shock. Sam said they had to escape quickly. But suddenly, Mr. White appeared behind the teenager and said it would be better if they all stayed put. Sam realized at that moment that he was too late. Mr. White said there was no need to fear him as he wouldn't harm them. He only had one reason. He began to explain that many from the school worked at their facility and had started leaking very important information. Mr. White said that this person had to either surrender or problems would begin, after which the man left and said he hoped they would figure something out by the time he returned. Meanwhile, the classmates were outraged. Sam thought about what to do, as the situation was worse than he had imagined. 
Someone began to say that Sam was to blame for everything and that he was a traitor. The others quickly picked up on this idea. Sam started to panic, having only recently moved to the island. Suddenly, something struck Sam sharply on the neck. Someone said they had heard everything he said, and he was better than they were. In the meantime, events returned to reality. Sam recounted everything he remembered. A classmate asked why they should believe him. Then Jade intervened, saying he was not obligated to believe them, but everything they told matched her version as well. When Jade went after Ashley, she couldn't find anything indicating her residence there. After receiving a notification that her grandparents had disappeared, Jade realized something was wrong. They decided to observe the school from hiding. Then Jade saw people carrying those containers. After that, dogs emerged from the containers. Jade continued, saying there were screams in the school. Students ran out covered in blood. She said she saw Sam make a list for himself. So she returned to the lab and did the same for herself. The teenager was surprised that Jade had been watching him the whole time and he hadn't even noticed. But the classmates still didn't believe, saying that each of them could be a traitor. Jade wondered why they needed to win their trust. After all, all those guys needed them more. This made them think. Then Jade asked Sam as if he were the boss where they were going now. He said it would be better to find a police officer in the cave. She should know how to get off the island. Ray approached, limping heavily. His leg was covered in blood. The monster had managed to scratch the teenager. The boy explained that they were in another group, and their leader used them as bait. Ray had come to save them and got injured. Ray said it was fine and just a scratch, but Sam insisted they go to the hospital. Another boy protested that the hospital was on the other side of town, and Ray said it was just a scratch. Then Sam grabbed that jerk and threatened that they didn't even know if an infection had gotten in, because Ray could turn into a monster. Sam also reminded them that Ray got hurt because he saved them all. Jade calmed Sam down, as his emotions were nearly taking control of him. After which she added that they needed his mega brain. 